Hey, hi everyone. I hope everyone is doing well. Uh, so uh, today we are taking a completely different topic uh, uh, and we are going to discuss uh, about product design. Uh, generally, this is more like uh, strategy and uh, design related uh, round uh, in the interviews if you uh, are looking at product management roles. Uh, but before we get into the details, please do uh, like and subscribe to my channel and uh, do leave uh, comments uh, about uh, any of the topics that you, uh, you know, wish me to cover in future. All right. So uh, I think getting into the topic uh, today. Uh, so basically, this will be more like an open ended uh, discussion uh, wherein you would be given uh, you would be given, uh, you know, and maybe an existing pro pro product uh, to be improved upon or uh, could have a completely new hypothetical product, right? So for us, I think for today's discussion, we are going to focus on WhatsApp and we are introducing a new feature in WhatsApp called the WhatsApp Photos. So uh, let's get into the problem statement, the goal, uh, you know, whether WhatsApp should uh, make the decision to whether go ahead or not. Uh, let's look at that, right? So. The problem statement is uh, uh, as follows. WhatsApp has basically decided to launch a photo app, right? And they would like the users to allow up to 5 GB worth of photos to be stored in the original quality, right? Uh, and the initial plan is uh, obviously to uh, roll it out free of cost for all users. But WhatsApp plans to also provide higher storage plan based on the usage, uh, uh, right? Now, the goal is obviously from WhatsApp product strategy perspective, like what is the overall market size for this, right? Whether it's worth investing to actually launch such an app or not, right? And then the decision based on the, uh, uh, you know, uh, overall analysis would uh, give us an indication whether uh, WhatsApp should be uh, going ahead with this app or not, right? So let's jump into the details of it. We'll start with the user estimates, uh, you know, to actually understand what is the overall market size, right? So going into the user estimates, right, uh, we'll do a few callouts. Basically, you can make assumptions about the daily active users, the total user base. Uh, you can also stick to one geography and proceed with the calculations, right? The idea is not to pin. Uh, no one is going to point you on the uh, uh, final numbers, but the approach is more important, right? So looking at the daily active users, right? Uh, let's go with the number of 300 million, right? Uh, and in that, um, uh, you know, let's assume that uh, per user, uh, obviously we are going to allow for 5 GB worth of uh, data. Uh, also assume that the total user base is, uh, the total user base is uh, around 1.2 uh, billion. Uh, right. So in uh, in uh, I would say Indian number system, if you were to represent these numbers, it will be 300 million would be uh, uh, approximately three crores. Uh, look at the calculations so of one million is 10 lakhs. So we are looking at 300 million, which is 3000 lakh, which is three crores. Right. Uh, if you're looking at total users, it's like four times of that. That is basically 12 crores. Right. Uh, again. Uh, not needed, I think, but just to give you a sense against the overall population, right? Uh, if you are looking at 140 crore, then what is the number of WhatsApp user? It could be higher, it could be lower. Uh, I don't have the exact numbers, but this is how you could probably like, you know, one way of approaching the solution. Uh, looking at the total storage uh, needed, right? So 5 GB uh, into 1.2 billion, right? It'll be like 6,000 terabytes. How did I arrive this number? Remember this table, uh, we have looked at this table in the design for Google Drive also, I'm just revisiting, right? So KB is 10 to the power 3, MB is 10 to the power 6, billion is 10 to the power 9, trillion is 10 to the power 12, and quad is 10 to the power 15. So here I'm looking at a GB multiplication of a billion, which is uh, basically this row, this into this. So it will be like 10 to the power 18 essentially. So, which is obviously going beyond this and hence I have put in like 6,000 uh, uh, terabytes, right? Now, for the daily users, right, what is the storage that you will need? Uh, so, let's uh, get into that calculation as well, right? Uh, we can look at total uh, daily users uh, as the overall number, of course, that we have. And let's assume that only 50% of that uh, user base will be using this feature, which is also very high, by the way. 
uh, but you can go with any number you can uh, put a number here maybe justify it as well uh, but remember one thing it is not going to be all the daily active users that are going to uh, use this feature that's uh, because it's a fairly new feature right until it gets adoption uh, given uh, over a period of time only then it will start uh, you know seeing a higher percentage of adoption right so look at this uh, uh, from a, a, a launch perspective right when you are launching or within one month's time or two months time what could be let's say you know the user base of daily active user that will use this feature so um, 300 into basically 0.5 million into 5 gb uh, which is roughly around 750 terabytes worth of data that you have to provide to the users on a daily basis uh, right uh, to all your users now one way to cross check if this number against this number is that obviously this 300 is one fourth of the number of base and we are also using a factor of half so out of the 600 terabyte, we're using a factor of one eight, right? So you, you're right. I mean, all they could do a cross check to basically just confirm whether you're right or not, right? So this is about the user estimates, uh, one part. Now coming to the user persona. So in product, I think you don't design a feature without actually knowing who are the users, like who would be the personas who are actually going to use this feature, right? It's essential for pretty much any software design. Uh, uh, be it like you know a uh, uh, business to business design a business to business software or it is a uh, uh, b2c product it does not matter personal have to be defined very clearly right so let's get into that so you have to list out all the major personas right that will be using this feature so one persona that you could think of could be like instagram influencer or a digital content creator kind of a persona right they could belong to any age group uh, the differentiating factor for them would be that they do click a lot of feed photos and they do take a lot of videos right probably like a hundred photos uh, or videos in a week right uh, and they need to share their photos there that is a use case or use it in editing tools right uh, that is their primary use case right so this persona is being defined by these characteristics of theirs right now similarly you could have another persona which is more like let's say a family guy right uh, you could name it anything you want uh, you know friends or whatever you want to call it uh, but this can be in the age group of 40 plus let's say they click photos only occasionally on events or let's say festival they click maybe five to ten photos in a week and then their use case is that they want to share photos with the family members right so differentiation is happening in persona based on the volume of photos and differentiation is also happening on how they are actually going to use the final product uh, right so your feature needs to cater to both of these personas i am limiting it to only two Feel free to add other personas also, but those personas should have some distinction, right? Uh, age group, probably yes. I could also argue that in this, I can also add people less than 40 and doing the same thing, right? But I'm not distinguishing uh, based them on the age group. That's just one characteristic of them. What I'm differentiating them on is the amount of times they're going to use the app. Plus, uh, once they have clicked and it's in the storage, uh, right, for WhatsApp, what are they going to do with it, right? So you need to keep in mind in defining these personas, right? So this is how you will define the personas. Uh, uh, and each persona can be thought of as a customer segment, right? That is what it is. Now coming to the user flow, right? The user flow is basically a step-by-step -step, uh, uh, process that the user needs to take to basically get to that feature or functionalities that the feature provides, right? So here, for example, we'll be on a home screen Correct. We will tap the file icons inside the chat. You uh, you will see all of this in a design walkthrough. Uh, but the flow is essentially to tell you how are you going to complete the full feature flow, right? So this is more like a feature flow, right? So you click on the uh, file icon inside the chat. Uh, you select the photos icon. You choose the images, right? Uh, now let's say you have too many selections, right? You have to uh, select more than the number of photos or videos that can come on a screen right and you don't remember also let's say for example so would you bring in any functionality yeah you can bring in search functionality you'll allow the users to search and then select and then add to a particular let's say uh, uh, you know album or if the selection is less uh, right then you just add it directly to the uh, album right uh, and basically then once it is uh, selected right you click on the done uh, the done button and then you are basically taken back to your uh, home screen 
now in terms of seeing this from a design perspective right uh, let's have a look at the design walkthrough right like what does a design walkthrough look like uh, uh, right. So design walkthrough is, uh, I would say, you can prepare wireframes in either a tool like Balsamic or uh, Figma or any other design prototyping tool that you feel would be useful. The essential part is to call out the functionalities on each of the pages, and if there are uh, any uh, uh, any functional specs that the users will benefit from, that also you should discuss in details, right? So that is. Uh, that is what uh, I think uh, this uh, design walkthrough is going to uh, look like. So let's jump into the details of the design walkthrough, correct? Now, so inside design walkthrough, uh, basically, as I mentioned, right, it is a walkthrough of the design components and you are linking it back to the user flow, right? So remember the user flow where we had started with, uh, you know, the home page and on the file icon inside the chat. So what does it mean, right? So here is your like you know uh, WhatsApp uh, uh, like you know home screen right, and inside that you click on the file icon, uh, you get your normal selection right of all let's say contact document gallery. Here is the new feature addition of photos right. Uh, so on this part is where you are actually getting the photos selection. Now once you click on the photos, what happens next? In the user flow, you said like you are given the option to select photos. Uh, sorry, choose images, videos, etc. Correct. So the selection is images, audio, video, and GIFs, right? This is a preference that users can also customize. You can ask the users to maybe just give them the option to select images and videos and drop these audios and GIF functionality from the screen, right? You can customize it to that level. I'm not going into the details. I'm just focusing on the user flow, right? The design flow. So once they are into this screen, they are doing a selection of sorts, right? So they can obviously make selections as I mentioned, right? They can go into the album, they can go into the audio, video, GIF, right? And very, uh, you can make the navigation simple and straightforward and similar to a very popular photo storage as like a Google photo app, right? Or any other photo app, like uh, 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 if you have used Flickr, right? I mean, they, these are like photo storage apps that can give you uh, ideas around like selection, right? of how you can allow and simplify the user experience around selection of the photos or videos, uh, right, or audio. Now, I think one other important aspect of this is that, let's say you click on images here, right, uh, it will take you to uh, this kind of a selection page wherein you can make selection of your images, right? So here it is obviously showing you albums, but Albums is a collection of images and videos, but uh, a similar thing will happen when you click on images here. It will uh, it will allow you to do a selection, and once you do a selection, uh, when you press the next button, it will take you to this page, right, where it says images. Now, I think in images, for example, what can happen is that uh, once you click here, right, there is a possibility that the number is very high, right, the number of images are very high. So, search functionality is allowed or is introduced just from a perspective of uh, allowing the users to select a lot of images and they don't have to necessarily remember uh, uh, right uh, the names and similarly like you know you are allowing that to happen on each of these right so videos also for example if you do videos then videos is also allowing uh, you know uh, selection now typically uh, you can, when you're creating videos or images or you don't probably, I don't think a lot of people actually uh, do remember uh, the names, right? They, they they usually like would put in uh, 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 like, you know, maybe a date. Worst case, I think for with 80% of the users, it's possible they don't do anything with the images. They just click the image. So in that case, basically, if you remember the date, right, for example, around the event or whatever, then you can also allow in your search functionality to search on meta. So meta will be like an information, let's say on a location that you had clicked, you remember, okay, I had clicked some photos in, uh, I don't know, maybe uh, uh, Singapore, right? So you just search, right? And when, if you had the location option on, then you will be able to search all the uh, images here and then obviously, you know, uh, make the selection, right? So this is how you would do it and then linking it back to once you have done the selection uh, in the design walkthrough, I have not shown the final page, 
but you can add a page where the selection is done and then you know you provide an option here in the bottom which says done and then that is it uh, you can also allow the user to say that i want to add this to a new album or an existing album right those are like minor i would say details to complete the flow uh, but high level i think this is what you should actually look at right now another part of uh, like the design is uh, on the settings page right uh, settings page is important for pretty much any like i would say app mobile app uh, so since we are talking of a mobile app design we should always always focus on the settings page right so here for example you see we are looking at privacy security backup uh, notification group settings and deleting my account right so what are these uh, you know uh, going to consist of Setting space is basically you can think of it as like a user preferences and all the information related to users in a single page, right? Now, for example, if I'm looking at a privacy option, then I should be able to look at my account info. I should be able to look at my profile photo, change it, uh, delete it. And I should probably also maybe allow to be set a, a sharing receipts kind of a thing, right? Uh, so you do have uh, on messages, for example, read receipts. So sharing receipts could be something very similar where once you are sharing, let's say uh, a receipt, do you want the person to know whether your photo that you shared, whether you want to get the notification back that they have seen your photo or they have not seen the photo, right? So you could allow some sort of receipts for that. Uh, on security, you could probably add verification and folder access is important because let's say uh, folder access you allow and you can have a separate discussion altogether on this. I'm not, uh, you know, uh, getting into the details, but folder access would mean like, for example, do I share it within the group uh, that I have created the folder for, or I allow the link to be shared publicly, uh, privately, right? Uh, or like folder access in general, if a user does not have a WhatsApp contact, then do you allow that to be shared or not shared, right? Do you allow it to be shared on an email, right? That is like a link to a user uh, number, right? So essentially defining all the folder access, right, uh, uh, for your folders that are there on the Photos app. On the backup, obviously, you can look at your plan settings, uh, right? Uh, if you're on a 5GB plan, you want to upgrade to 20, 100, whatever, right? Do you uh, show the users that they have, let's say, consumed 2.5GB and, and then go beyond that? Quality, what quality you want to store, original quality, or do you want to reduce the quality to save the data, mobile data use, like when do you want to do the backup, only on Wi-Fi networks or on mobile also, or on, like uh, only on Wi-Fi, right? So that kind of selection. Notification, right? So you want to like allow users obviously to comment, let's say you shared an album, you allow the users to comment, react on the photos, right? So do you want to put the notification on mute, right? I mean, you want to allow certain kind of tones, vibrations, right? Uh, on the app, on the app and then obviously on your Android device, right? Uh, uh, so you control the entire notification itself, uh, you know, through this. And the group settings, right? So group settings are basically, um, in WhatsApp, obviously you create groups, right? I mean, there are multiple ways in which you can create groups, members directly or communities, but I'm generally talking about groups as one or more users, right? So wherein like you will have settings related to whether you allow members to add photos, right? Do I allow my members to add photos or I am the only person who can allow the photos and then I just share, right? You allow the users to create public shareable links, right? This is something that obviously can create a lot of issues because you would have created, let's say, a bunch of photos, put it in a folder. Then you basically allow members to add photos and then do you allow that a folder to be viewed by some third person right but only if that person has a link right so things of that nature right the group settings uh, that you can also define here and then delete my account wherein you say that okay whether you restore or don't restore the account in 30 days right so this is how you should structure your design walkthroughs um screen by screen uh function by function uh functionality by functionality uh and also looking at the uh, overall control and the settings right of any feature uh, it does not really matter uh, right uh, i could probably also introduce in a similar way uh, let's say through whatsapp uh, uh, let's say uh, whatsapp decides to go into uh, uh, providing financial services right the structure is still going to remain the same you'll have to still give a design walkthrough of how that option is going to appear where is it going to appear what selections can you make right 
how do you control the settings of who can maybe let's say add the funds or remove the funds right all of that right so uh, uh, you can think of design walkthrough as a ui interaction with your design team they are the ones who will be obviously going to uh, fine tune this finally uh, and maybe even come up with better design screen right a product manager can only go as far as like you know thinking about the functionality and the use cases it doesn't mean that like you know you have to spend your whole day or like you know the uh, majority of your uh, product development time in uh, product management time in thinking about um what each screen uh, uh, nitty gritties would be like right for example font colors background screens uh, this is like standard like you know so you don't have to worry a lot designers also will be giving you suggestions that you would have definitely skipped so my honest suggestion is that you please accept i think the designer suggestion because they are doing this work in day in and day out so they might for example say that hey you know what on the selection i don't like seeing uh, images audios videos in gif let's maybe create categories where we say images and videos clubbed under one uh, everything audio clubbed under one and animations or something of that sort clubbed under categories right they might put in a separate button and say well, let's allow the functionality from here right so be open to that idea have a discussion understand what the designers are trying to say and why are they trying to say that right similarly they might say that in the settings page for example right there are a lot of uh, options that we might have missed out i don't know uh, maybe they might say that for example we don't have anything on the verification right of the accounts that will be part of the group right so be open i think to those discussions as well with the designer this is primarily a design discussion uh, uh, not a tech team discussion uh, not a uh, uh, let's say marketing discussion this is purely a design discussion right and now coming to the final part of this which is understanding the north star metrics uh, right for any feature that you will launch as a product manager throughout your product management career has to have metrics that are tied to the organization goal otherwise no one is going to care about your feature uh, it's given you could have one you could have 10 metrics uh, for that matter you could have 100 metrics for that matter but those have to tie to your uh, organization north star metrics right so what are those north star metrics let's have a look um success metrics basically uh, is what we call as uh, you know the eventual um, org uh, metrics that you will tie to your uh, feature and then basically that highlights the adoption of this feature right that you're launching so let's say you're looking at user engagement metrics what could you basically uh, use or what would be your criteria to define whether my user engagement is good bad poor very good excellent right let's say those are the categories right so you can track the number of users who are using the whatsapp photo app uh, 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 right uh, or the feature that you have right uh, by day by week uh, by month right uh, you can also look at the average number of upload downloads in the app um, uh, right and by that i mean that if you remember the design walk through uh, we had specifically created a separate button for the photos app so in that photos app how many users are actually using that to let's say maybe download uh, or like you know upload the photos by making the selection right so uh, that could also give you an idea whether the photo app is useful or not useful now you'll ask where is this option of upload and downloads in the app because we did not discuss this specifically right? so in the design walkthrough the part where you could think about is that let's say obviously you click photos in your camera right you can allow that to be accessed by the photo app whatsapp photo app or not right if you don't allow then you obviously have to do an upload uh, right but if you do allow then you can also allow for a download into your folders the folders are there in your whatsapp photo uh, correct so that is uh, you know the functionality and that is going to give you an idea of probably like whether your app is being used or not right the feature is being used or not uh, you can also track this against your overall whatsapp for trends right uh, so what do you mean by that uh, essentially what it means is that I am trying to see that whether my photo app or the feature uh, that I have, right, is being used or not used, uh, or whether it's on an increasing trend, decreasing trend, whatever it is, right. So can I track it against the overall WhatsApp usage trend also? What that will help me is that if, let's say, due to some outages 
the WhatsApp uh, usage is down, then I would not be able to, uh, 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 you know, say that my photo app usage is going down or the feature usage is going down, uh, right? Why I, so when you compare this against the overall uh, app usage itself, WhatsApp app, you know that there was an outage and hence the trend is going down, right? Uh, so you will be able to know that the customer base is shrinking, right, say for a period of time. And that's why your trend is also in the downward direction for engagement in that period of time. Outside of that period, you will have to obviously investigate, right, try to find out. User. Another metric that you could look at is the user retention, right? So let's say uh, average number of days between the first ever use and the latest use. What is the number of days for the user, right, average? So you could look at the following code, like the first time use. The first time usage essentially means, um, so let's say you use the, uh, you as a user use the app first ever time, let's say uh, on Monday of a particular week, right? Uh, and then your last use, right, uh, was essentially on the Friday of that same week, right? So your number of days basically is like five. Then you calculate that average for all your users. Now, this is a case where there is only one time usage. So I should not be saying like first time usage, probably call it like one time usage, right? A one time usage and see like what is the latest use uh, difference and the first ever use difference. You could also have a case where you are coming back to the app again and you do that repeatedly. And if you are doing that more than, let's say, five times, then I want to again calculate my first ever usage versus my last usage, which will be the fifth time, right? Or you could say, like, okay, because this is more than five times use, right? You'll have to define it for every user uh, when did they last actually use the app and then calculate that difference between their first average and then just, uh, you know, use the average. And the final cohort is basically greater than 10 times use, right? So. Remember the first time, one time use was Monday and Friday. Now multiply that by, let's say 10 times, which means that I obviously came on Monday. Then I again came on Monday evening, then Tuesday morning, Tuesday evening, Tuesday, Wednesday morning, Wednesday. Likewise, you will have five, 10 times, greater than 10 times use, right? Uh, uh, of the app, uh, you're accessing the app. And then you're basically, the whatever the last use was from the first, you calculate the average number of days. Why have I divided this into the number of cohorts, right? Uh, see, one essential, uh, uh, like, you know, uh, uh, I would say insight that I'm looking at is the one-time usage, probably I can call that category as low-ish use, like low, uh, you know, stickiness. More than five time usage is probably mid stickiness and greater than 10 times is a very high stickiness customer, right? I mean, they keep on coming back to your app, uh, right? And let's say when you divided this, you also saw the average number of days uh, by different, uh, let's say, periods, right? So in that case, you can maybe come up with some insights like let's say uh, users that are using the app more than 10 times on an average, use it for one to two days. Like, you know, their average number of days that they spend, right, uh, is one, uh, uh, you know, between their first and user and the last use is around one to one and a half days. Whereas, obviously, more than five time usage uh, is probably somewhere between four, 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 uh, four days, right? I mean, the number of days between their first and the last use. What that is telling you is that the greater then 10 times use cohort is basically uh, also using your uh, uh, feature more, but they are also using it more frequently, right? So this is basically trying to divide your uh, outcomes into whether customers that are using it more frequently are also the ones that are, uh, you know, uh, 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 also. So frequency of usage as well as uh, a recency of usage, right? I mean, that is what you're trying to, uh, you know, come up uh, with this, uh, you know, matrix. So uh, I probably haven't covered maybe all the possible metrics. Engagement metrics is one, retention metrics is one. If you can tie it to maybe some monetary metrics, right? Based on the storage numbers that we had. And if you know the storage costs, uh, right, you could also track the infrastructure metrics, which is the overall costs. Um, I don't have the details 
uh, but you could definitely bring it up in discussion if you know those uh, numbers right so uh, i hope